Color psychology suggests that different colors can have an impact on our moods, feelings, physiology, and even behaviors. The color pink, for example, is thought to be a calming color associated with love, kindness, and tranquility. In 1978, Alexander Schaus showed that the color pink has a physical effect on his test subjects and even an influence the cardiovascular system. Merely staring at a page of light pink paper had, quote, a significant effect on lowering the heart rate, pulse, respiration, and even muscle strength as compared to other colors. The specific shade is called Baker Miller Pink after the institution where it was first tested. After these results, institutions put the shade of pink to work in prison cells, drunk tanks, and psych wards with initial positive results. The next year, 1979, the head football coach of the University of Iowa, who also had a master's degree in psychology, weaponized this information by having the locker rooms of the visiting team painted pink. Floor to ceiling, pink urinals, pink sinks, everything. Then other college teams started to follow suit. Even teams in the UK were doing this. Governing bodies of these athletic institutions actually introduced a rule that both locker rooms must be painted the same color at every stadium. When he was born in 1929, Martin Luther King Jr.'s name was Michael King Jr. He was named after his father, Reverend Michael King, who was the senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. In 1934, Ebenezer Baptist Church sent Daddy King to Berlin for a Baptist World Alliance meeting. During his time in Europe, Dr. King Sr. toured extensively. Germany was the birthplace of Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation, and during his tours, Dr. King Sr. visited many of the sites linked to Luther's life and legacy. It was Luther's audacity to defy authority that caught the Reverend's attention. The original Martin Luther had seen wickedness and corruption growing within the church of his day. He saw wrongs that needed to be made right and courageously took a stand. When Dr. King Sr. was in Germany, he also saw the beginnings of Nazism take root. Back home, Daddy King experienced firsthand the ills of racial discrimination and prejudice. He saw the need for a new generation to arise and take a stand against the wrongs in the world. That's why, upon his return to Atlanta, he changed both his and his five-year-old son's name from Michael King to Martin Luther King. His son grew up to become one of the most prolific civil rights leaders of all time and embody his namesake in many ways. While theologically the two Martins differed significantly, both men are remembered for their willingness to confront authority and follow what they believe was God's will, even at the risk of grave personal consequence. It was for this reason that both Martin Luther of 1483 and Martin Luther of 1929 are known as rebels who changed the world. Each of my portrait paintings contains symbols that represent important stories from that subject's life. Let's talk about the hidden symbols and stories in the portrait MLK. I decided to dress Martin in the shade of pink to represent peace. I'll still make his stance strong and resolute. King did in fact wear a gold Rolex. I'll have the time on his watch read 115 to represent his birthday, January 15th, which is now a national holiday. The date window will read four for his four children. King was greatly inspired by Gandhi's example of peaceful protest. His connection with Gandhi can be represented by this torn linen bracelet. A couple of chain necklaces around his neck will feel a little bit like armor. He survived an attempted assassination 10 years before his ultimate death. Coco is a sweet nickname for Martin's beautiful wife, Coretta Scott King. An olive branch is a symbol that's used for peace in the Bible. Martin Luther King was a Trekkie. It really humanizes him, but also it anchors him to the 60s. I want this portrait to have an aesthetic that's very mid-century cool. During his work as a civil rights leader, King was arrested 29 times. 7089 was the number on his first mugshot. Put a crown on above it in reference to the nobility and valor of these arrests. The stained glass window represents King's involvement in the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Martin was a preacher at the same church where his father was pastor. Mama King, very involved in the ministry through music. The three circles above them represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther share a lot of similarities. Both were dedicated to the betterment of civil rights in the United States. These footsteps represent marches and a Montgomery bus boycott when the black community walked for 385 days to end segregation on public transportation. Actress Nichelle Nichols caused a sensation in the 1960s for her role as Lieutenant Uhura in the TV series Star Trek. It was one of the first times a black woman was cast as a main character in a major television show. And not only was she a main character, but Lieutenant Uhura was an intelligent and powerful leader. After the first season of Star Trek, Nichols decided to pursue a career on Broadway. On the night that she told the producer of Star Trek that she would not return for season two, she attended an NAACP fundraiser where she met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He shared that he was a huge fan of the show and that he and his wife Coretta let the kids stay up late to watch Star Trek together as a family. 
Nichols told Dr. King, I wish I could be out there marching with you. And he said, no, 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 you don't understand. You are marching. You're reflecting what we're fighting for. Nichelle sheepishly told Dr. King she had just quit the show that day. That night, Dr. King successfully convinced Nichelle what an opportunity for positive change her role in Star Trek really was. Nichelle returned to the historic role until the show's end and in many Star Trek movies. She and William Shatner made waves in 1968 with one of the first interracial kisses portrayed on U.S. television. The Shatner Nichols kiss was considered groundbreaking at the time and was well received by the public. Nichols also worked with NASA to recruit minority and female personnel for the space agency. We are also lucky that Dr. King was a Trekkie and that Nichelle Nichols used her role in a sci-fi show to affect social change. Martin Luther King Jr. was married to the love of his life, Coretta Scott, for 14 years before his assassination. The two met in Boston while each were attending university. They married in June of 1953 and went on to have four children. Coretta was an unwavering partner. She had to believe in the importance of the civil rights movement as much as Martin. She survived a bombing in their home while he was away, visited him in jail while five months pregnant with their third child, even endured blackmail from the FBI, who recorded the King's personal phone calls attempting to break up the couple. She sacrificed so much for the cause. In the 10 years before his assassination, Martin Luther King traveled roughly 6 million miles giving memorable speeches advocating for civil rights and nonviolence. Before leaving on these trips, Martin would gift Coretta fresh red carnations. But on March 12, 1968, Coretta received synthetic red carnations from him. When she asked him why he would send her fake flowers when he had always sent her fresh, he told her that he wanted to give her something that would always keep. Just three weeks later, Martin Luther King was shot and killed in Memphis, Tennessee. Coretta was left with that last bouquet of red carnations, and they did always keep, even until she passed in 2006. There are no known scientific reasonings for why premonitions occur, but they allow us to give our loved ones one final gift, either a meaningful goodbye or flowers that will always keep. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words have echoed throughout history, igniting a flame of hope and change. I feel that nonviolence, the organized nonviolent resistance, is the most powerful weapon that oppressed people can use in breaking loose from the bondage of oppression. He believed nonviolence was the strongest display of love for all of mankind. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. With every word he spoke, he stirred the hearts and minds of millions, leading a movement that transformed the nation. All of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. His messages of love, peace, and equality continue to inspire, reminding us to continue the work of forging a fair, loving, and equal America. I still believe that we shall overcome. This faith can give us courage to face the uncertainties of the future. There are only three people who have their own federal holiday in the United States. Christopher Columbus, George Washington, and Martin Luther King Jr. Four days after his assassination in 1968, a U.S. representative made a motion to establish a national holiday in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. However, it wasn't until 1983 that President Reagan signed the bill for the holiday into law. Beginning in 1986, the first Monday of January was finally deemed Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Not only does it celebrate his birthday, January 15th, but it is a day that honors all he did as a nonviolent activist as a civil rights leader. It is a great time for us as a country to reflect on our journey of civil rights as an American people.